we're talking, as we have been for a while, on true authority. On true authority. And understanding what true and real authority is about. <clears throat> I've made this statement to you for a while that when you give God His place in your life, You can take your place over the enemy. When you give God his place in your life, then you'll have real understanding of how to take your place over the enemy. And tonight as I'm getting into this word I want to expound on that a little bit because in in the series as we've taught on this, we've talked about different types of authority. You know, there's there's all different kinds of authority in the earth. There's civil authority. There's authority in the church world. There's authority in the business world. There's authority everywhere. I mean, everywhere you look, there's authority. When you're when you're driving down the freeway and it says 75 miles an hour. It didn't mean 85. It meant 75 for a reason, whether you like it or not. You know, it was really hard when it said 55. And I'm on the freeway driving to New Mexico to see my dad on I-10, driving 55 miles an hour. Give me a break. Huh? But it's still... It, 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 it is an authority. And, you know, we're self-made people. Most people, they're self-made. I can do what I want. I can operate the way I want to on my own rules, on, on, the, on the way I think is right. And, you know, the rest of the world can, you could use some choice words that most people would say. The rest of the world can take a hike. Because I'm my own man, I can do what I want to do, and nobody's going to tell me nothing. And that's the worst place to live. There's no worse place on the planet to live because now you're in rebellion to authority, and when you're in rebellion to natural authority, you will rebel against God's authority because God's authority set up natural authority. Just the way it is. And there's an enemy out there that's working overtime to convince us we don't have to obey authority. We, we, don't have to, we don't have to look to authority. I'm not talking about authority that, that mishandles you or misuses you or does something illegal, immoral, or something that goes against the word. I'm, I'm talking about even authority that has a bad attitude. The Bible's real clear about it. And the more we learn that, and the more we embrace it, the more then we are able to take our place over the enemy. Because then I don't spend all my life and all my time mad at everybody else. Because when you're rebelling against authority, you're mad at people. Man, I mean, you got a list of them. You're mad at this one. It's their, it's their fault that you're, this is happening in your life. Isn't it amazing how many issues that a person can have in their life? And they can blame 15 people. You know, well, you know, back then it was because of this. Back then, then five years earlier when I worked at that job, it was because of this person. But there's, there's one main central focus and theme through everything that that person lives, and it's them being a part of everything that's not working. And yet they want to blame everybody else for why it's not. And most of the time, it's because of the rebellion that's not been worked out of them. Everybody's got it. I don't care who you are. Everybody's got rebellion. Everybody's rebelled. But I'm not staying with it. I got delivered of it. I'm staying delivered of it. And every time I have an opportunity to rebel, you remember, when you've overcome something, that doesn't mean that it'll never come back to you. 
Actually, it'll come back to you a lot of different ways. I'm staying under authority. I'm staying free from that because I've taken my place over the devil. And I'll just tell you this. The true authority that we've been talking about is, is actually spiritual authority. Because God is spirit, but so is the devil spirit. You know, the devil, the devil himself and demon spirits, they're angels. They're fallen angels. And they are not in, they're not in physical form within themselves. They take physical form with people in controlling people in their minds. But they're, within themselves, they're not in physical form, so they're spirit. Adam and Eve had that spiritual authority. They gave it to Satan and all his demonic forces for 4,000 years on planet earth, they ruled with that. Jesus won it back and now he's working overtime to convince people that he still has it. And he didn't have it. And I'm telling you right now, that's where the battle is. The battle is against spiritual authority. It's for spiritual authority. It's mine, it's yours, it's ours, it's the church's because of what Jesus accomplished. And it's been given to us. And that's what we've been talking about. But if God doesn't take that place in your life, if He's not supreme authority in your life, meaning that everything that His Word says is true, I don't care how irrelevant it appears to be in in the time period that we're living in, I don't care. His Word is true. Amen? And he, he is his word. Anything that his word says, that's what he is. And I have to believe that. And when he takes his place in my life because I've given that to him, because I'm choosing to believe his word, no matter, no matter what it takes. And listen, you, you, you're choosing to believe his word for the rest of your life because that word will constantly be challenged all the time. There will be something that comes up in your life and against you on a, on a regular basis trying to convince you that it's not true and that it doesn't work and he can't stand behind it and fulfill it. He's working overtime. Well, because I've chosen, take myself for example, I've chosen to give him first place in my life for him to take the place that he was created he, he wasn't created for that. He just is. He created me for him to be in first place. And when I've given him that by submitting to him and to his authority, then I can rightfully take the place that I have over the devil, and the devil can't touch me, not even a lick. So these are the scriptures we've been talking about. And, and I'm going to expound on that a little bit more as I read, the, read a few of them. I just have a few tonight. 25. Behold, I give you authority. Luke, um, no, actually, I, I want to read Luke 9 and verse 1. Then he called his 12 disciples together and he gave them power and authority over all demons and to cure diseases. And I've said this along the way, and I'm saying this again. Demon spirits and what is wrong with people go hand in hand. But you and I have the right to take authority over them and give them no place. I'm telling you today that the majority of what we deal with today concerning demon spirits are in the soul. They're in the mind, the will, and they affect the emotions of a person in a huge way. But most of what we deal with in this country, here, in the form of demon spirits, is in the soul. I mean, there's there's a lot of it, too, that's in the flesh, but most of it's in the soul. You get a hold of the soul and the way a person thinks, and you can control the rest of it. But we've been given authority over that. He gave it to the to the twelve, and then in the tenth chapter, he gave it to seventy. And then in Luke 10, 19, he says, Behold, I give you authority. He's saying this to the, there were, I'm sure there were more than 82 at the time, at this time. This is later on in the 10th chapter. I mean, people were being added by the day. 
He said, Behold, I give you authority to trample on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. And he said, Nothing shall by any means hurt you in any way, shape, or form. Nothing hurts you. You know, I read that, I read that passage out of Luke chapter uh, 4 about the beginning of Jesus' earthly ministry. And I've been, uh, I mentioned that to you, I think it was last week, and um, <clears throat> how that Jesus, when he came out of the wilderness, 40 days, the Bible says he was hungry. And he comes face to face with, with Satan. To him it would have been Lucifer because, you know, of the relationship that they had in heaven. And he came face to face with him in a bodily form. And he said, if you're really the Son of God, turn this stone into bread. And I told you last week, and I'm I'm just reminding you of this. Jesus made the statement many times, he only came to the earth to do what the will of the Father was. And in that moment, being hungry, and, you know, turning the stone into bread could have satisfied his hunger pains. But to me, maybe this sounds a little non-spiritual, But he's here to do the will of the Father, and it's not the will of the Father for him to turn that stone into bread. And he's tempted to do something, take authority over something, exercise a command in a situation that was not the will of God. He was tempted to do that. I can kind of hear the Father saying to him in the moment as he's speaking to him, No, that's not what we want. We'll go to a restaurant later. Right? No, we're not doing that. We're we're not playing his silly, ridiculous little game. And we're not playing with him. There's a lot of things that seem right, and they're not right. The right authority, because it's the will of the Father, and the right timing is everything in life. And that's where most people miss it. Why? Because they're stirred up emotionally, they're worked up emotionally by people in other different types of situations, mostly it's rooted in fear, and when that happens and we're in our emotions, we're not hearing God. At the end of Jesus' life, he made this statement, the devil's got nothing in me, he's he's got nothing on me. Why? Because he lived his life for 33 years, only doing the will of the Father. That's what he did. Only did the will of the Father for 33 years. The devil had nothing on him, nothing in him. And what what did he do all that for? To empower us to be able to do the same thing. We don't have to give in to this stuff, but we've got to be knowledgeable and understand how the enemy operates. The Bible says, give the devil no place. The only way you can give the devil place or not give him place is to understand how he operates. Not giving him credit, but just knowing his tricks and schemes in trying to deceive people into getting people to believe things that are not true. I'm telling you tonight, we have that authority. We have the spiritual upper hand. And he gave you authority over all the power of the enemy, and nothing would hurt you or harm you. That's a promise, and God cannot lie. That's a promise to you and I. In Ephesians 1 and verse 19, it says, he said, and this is the prayer that Paul was praying to the church, and, and the last little part of that in verse 19 And what the exceeding greatness of his power is to us as we believe. And all of that is according to the working of his mighty power, which he worked in Christ 
when he raised him from the dead, seated him at his own right hand in the heavenly places, far above all principality, power, might, and dominion, that's all those demon forces that he gave us authority over, and every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in that which is to come. And he put all things under his feet. The Father put everything under the feet of Jesus. And Jesus did what? He gave it. He gave him to be head over all things to the church, and, and which is his body, the fullness of him that fills all in all. The Father gave it to Jesus, Jesus gave it to us, the church, which is His body in the earth, and we have that spiritual authority over principalities, powers, rulers of the darkness, every demonic force that is out there, every lie of the enemy that attacks your mind, you have authority over that. But I have to exercise that authority. God's Word, God's Word has to be supreme in my life. I have to give God place in my life through the Word. You're not giving place to God by just saying, okay, God, just take that place. I mean, I can tell my wife as her husband that I'm going to do something and promise to do it, and I can break the promise, and so what I said meant absolutely nothing. What matters is how I follow through in believing that what he says is true and not what I see and what potentially tries to stir me up emotionally so that I'll make decisions from my emotions and I'll treat other people from stirred up place of emotions. That's the worst thing you can do. Making really quality decisions in your life just from the top of your head based on emotional situations that are going on around you is the worst place to make any decision in life. Any decision that you make in life that is not bathed in patience, first and foremost, will usually end up being wrong. We weren't created to figure this life out on our own. We just were not. We've been given the helper to help us. He's got the plan. He won't do it for us, but he'll help us accomplish it. And the more we understand that and take that and make it a part of our life, then the devil finds no place in us. He can't hurt us. He can't harm you. He can't do anything to you. Nothing. Why? Because he's defeated. But I have to know that I have that authority. That's spiritual authority. And when you have spiritual authority, you can affect all other authority. Because you know how to do it. I I believe I understand how to deal with natural civil authority. I I believe I understand how to do that. I I believe God has shown me how to deal with that. And it's not with a picket sign. No, it's with my words in praying what 1 Timothy 2, 1 says to do. It says to pray for all people and all those in authority. And it shows how to pray for them. But prayer is not just some watered-down bunch of words Prayer is connection with God, the one who is the authority, empowering the ones on the earth to operate in his authority and have the spiritual authority in the earth so that natural authority will chill. I'll just tell you right now, what's going on in this nation right now is a direct result of the church operating too much from their emotions. Direct. If we had time, we could sit here tonight and debate that. (laughs) No, we wouldn't. No! But I'm just telling you, it's from Genesis to Revelation, it's clear. If you do it His way, it's not like it is right now. 
oh, you mean, Pastor, if we just prayed and shut up, then, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> try shutting up. Just try shutting up. And turn your words, instead of having them directed on other people that you don't like, allow your words to come in a force that begins to penetrate people's hearts. I know it's happening. We've been created for this time. Man, I'm telling you, ha, I was born to live in these last five months. I was born and beyond. I was born for right now. I'm telling you, right now I was born to live right now. I'm telling you, I'm so busy, I can't even tell you some days. I'm so busy helping other people to believe. I can't tell you how busy I am helping other people to believe. I have to fight with the fears. I have to fight against anything that tries to come. But I'm telling you, we, we've around here, I believe most of you feel the same way because we, around here, you've been taught to do your due diligence so that when something comes, and listen, I mean, we're, we're not, we're not, you know, our faith is not in the fact that, well, all this hype's going to settle down. That's not where my faith is. Don't think for a second that there's not stuff down the, down the road, other stuff. But it's just a challenge to help penetrate this stuff, all this mess that's out there, and allow God and his word to shine through this whole thing. That's what matters. That's what most people are not doing, or we wouldn't be in the position that we're in right now. Too much emotion. And I think I can say that wholeheartedly, with absolute confidence that I've heard from God on that. Because if the church, just the church, we're not talking about people that have no understanding of God. If the church will operate in the truth of God's word and allow God to take their, his place in them and they taking their place over the enemy, this thing's shut down. I promise you, it's down, dead, no more. So I just take the challenge, and if nobody else wants to do it, I'll just do it. <laughs> you, you, but you know what I'm saying? I can't make somebody else do that, but I am. And it, it's a full-time job because I want to be, I, I want my mouth to run at times. I mean, I, I want to I put my mouth on other people and say things that, I, that I, I believe just need to be said. I can't. Man, I'm telling you, I could get on social media and but I can't. You see somebody coming out there and they throw, I mean, what are you, what, what? I mean, it can't, can't do it, can't do it. What do we have to do? We have to love people. Yeah. But you'll never love people if you don't know how much God loves you. So God taking his place in your life comes from you really believing. You don't have to crucify other people to make sure you advance. He's got your back. People can't hurt you. He proved that. Just read the story. Just read Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John about five or six times in a row. Just read through it and look how nobody ever took advantage of you. People will not get the best of you. Why? Because you reap what you sow. I'm even to the point now where I'm praying for people that have, re that have sown that they don't reap. God, if there'd be some other way, pray for their eyes to be opened up so they can see clearly. That's what it takes. We have the spiritual authority to do that. We've been given that. And we've got to exercise it. James 4, 7 says, Therefore submit to God, resist the devil, and he flees. 
You're the one submitting, and you're the one resisting. Is that not right? Is that true? I'm the one submitting. I'm the one resisting. When I submit and he, he takes that right place in my life, then I resist and he flees. Actually, he runs in terror. Why? Because he's, he's viewing it from a spiritual perspective. See, see all through Scripture... Demons ran from Jesus. I mean, they trembled in their, in, in their boots, per se, when Jesus came around. That's what he really wants. He wants you and I to come to the knowledge of the truth in everyday life, in everything that we do. Can you say amen? amen. I'm telling you tonight, folks, we've got the goods. We've got what it takes. We can do this thing. There's not anything that we face today or that we'll face in the future. God's not already been there, and he's already paved the way for us. God has made a way even when it seemed like there's no way. He's already made the way. That's what we tap into. Man, it's a win-win. Can you say amen to that? It's a win-win. I don't care what you're facing today. You begin to go through the list of different scriptures and things that God is showing you about your situation, and you begin to apply that to your situation, you'll see your situation change every single time. It's always worked that way for me. In the 40-some-odd years that I've been saved, it's always worked that way for me. When I tried to take a break and try to, you know, uh, try to figure things out on my own and try to make certain things happen like that, when, when I would do that, it wouldn't work. When I come back to the things of God, it always works. And today, I don't care how patient I have to be, I'll be patient because he's got the answer and it'll always work. Amen. Say amen. Father, we bless you tonight. We thank you. I thank you that this word, Lord, is such an honor and a privilege to preach your word. Such an honor. Such an honor. And tonight, I just release your blessing. I release your empowerment over the people. They have this authority. They're operating in this authority. And it will not, this authority will not disappoint.